all the activation functions we have seen so far were hand designed by humans but there is an activation function which is designed by a machine and the fun part is it outperforms all the existing activation functions want to know more let's see in this video hello guys welcome back to another interesting activation function so far we have seen many activation functions their pros and cons but today we will see an activation function which is designed by a computer algorithm you might have heard about neural architecture search this is developed by google which is a technique for automating the design of neural networks so in the name you can see that it is a neural architecture search let's say i want to build a network for classifying these 10 categories of images so this is c for 10 data set for image classification how do you approach this how do i decide like how many layers i need to keep in a network how many neurons to keep we generally start with a simple network and evaluate it on the data set and after seeing the performance if the accuracy is not up to the mark then we will add some more layers if that doesn't work out we will try adding more and more videos this is a repetitive process until we find our best architecture for the particular task this process is tedious and it takes a lot of time what if we automate this process we define the search space and search strategy search strategy is like our focus area if the accuracy is our main concern then you can look for complex models which use high accuracies but they might be a bit slower you might not be able to use them for a real time use case if you want an okayish kind of model like the accuracy is good enough but the model is simple that it can be used in real time then accordingly you can put these constraints in the search strategy it will do numerous experiments and it will evaluate all of them and finally it finds the best architecture for that problem it uses reinforcement learning for doing this google has come up with many state of the art architectures with this approach one example is efficient net it is the state of the art architecture for image classification and it is designed by neural architecture search now they have used this automation search for discovering the activation function they define the search space and strategy and it will look for different functions which are possible candidates of an activation function and it will evaluate them finally it will give some promising activation functions they have found many activation functions which showed promising performance you can see here these are the functions discovered by NAS. these are promising candidates for the activation functions these are the equations and these are the corresponding plots all of them are unbounded on the positive side some of them are positive and some of them are going to negative but all of them are unbounded except this curve which is following the sine wave because the equation is minimum of x and sine of x and on the negative side some are bounded and some of them are unbounded if you see here these are unbounded but this is bounded and the same way here these two are bounded and these two are not bounded now they have evaluated all these activation functions on cifar 10 and cifar 100 data sets these two are image classification data sets on 10 and 100 categories of images so they have tested these activations on three different architectures and finally they have compared the accuracies against relu because this is the most popular activation function so far these are the evaluation results you can see that most of the discovered activation functions by neural architecture search outperformed relu across all the networks in both the tasks the experiments are conducted on three different architectures to see their generalization capability because they should not work well only for one architecture they should work well for all the common architectures and use cases so you can see across the three architectures these discovered functions outperformed relu most of them except the last two also they outperformed relu on the cifar 100 data set also this is only on the image classification task for the initial screening the first activation function performed better than all others so they have taken this activation function and conducted experiments with this on variety of tasks and this function is our swish activation function they named this as swish the function looks like this in its simplest form it is just x into sigmoid of x it looks like relu on the positive side on the negative side it has some negative region it is unbounded on the positive side just like relu and bounded on the negative side can you observe anything special about this function these are the other activation functions we have seen so far and this is our swish activation function can you spot any special behavior all these functions are monotonic in nature they are continuously increasing from negative to positive or some are always in positive range but they are continuously increasing whereas in swish you can see that it has decreased a bit and then it started increasing so we have negative slope and positive slope in the function that's why this is not monotonic and this non monotonicity increases the expressivity and improves the gradient flow during the experiments they have proved that this property provide robustness to different weight initializations and learning rates the more general form of swish activation is this 
we have an additional parameter called beta. You can keep it as a constant or you can keep it as a trainable parameter. And this is how the function behave for different beta values. If you decrease the beta less than 1, then it is almost becoming a linear function. And if you increase the beta greater than 1, it is almost becoming like a ReLU function. So you can view switch activation as an interpolation between the linear function and the ReLU function. And the degree of interpolation can be controlled by this beta. Now let's calculate the derivative of switch function. This is the formula for this switch function. This looks like the multiplication of two different functions. So we need to apply the multiplication rule for calculating the derivative. So you have to take the derivative of each at a time by multiplying with the other one. Let's see what we can get here. If I take f dash of x, then first I need to take x as it is and then derivative of sigmoid of x. We know that the derivative of sigmoid of x is sigmoid of x into 1 minus sigmoid of x. So this we already know from the sigmoid activation function. And then we have sigmoid of x and the derivative of x is 1. Now if you take x inside this, x into sigmoid of x minus x into sigmoid of x square because I am taking this total term inside this plus sigmoid of x. Now x into sigmoid of x is my switch activation. I will keep that separate plus I will take sigmoid of x as common. If I take sigmoid of x as common, I will get 1 here. So 1 minus x into sigmoid of x. So this is my f of x plus sigmoid of x into 1 minus Again, this is my f of x because these two are switch activation functions x into sigmoid of x. So the derivative I will get as f of x plus sigmoid of x into 1 minus f of x. This is the derivative of switch activation function and this is how the derivatives looks like. So this is the first derivative and this is the second derivative. Now let's look at some properties of switch function. So we know that it is unbounded on the positive side and bounded on the negative side. So unboundedness is actually a desirable property because it avoids the vanishing gradient problem. And it is non-monotonic because it is decreasing for some time and then it is increasing. This turned out to be a desirable property. And then smoothness. So it is a smooth curve. So gradient exists at every point. Now let's compare the performance of switch with respect to other activation functions. And let's start with ReLU. They have conducted some ablation studies on the number of layers and batch sizes. So as the number of layers increases, you can see that Swish outperforms the ReLU. And the same way as the batch size increases, Swish actually performed better than ReLU. And in all batch sizes, it performed better than ReLU. They have conducted experiments on the image classification tasks for CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 datasets and compared against all the common activation functions. You can see here that Swish outperformed all of them in all the cases. In all the three networks across both the tasks, Swish actually performed better than all the others. Not only for image classification, they have conducted experiments in natural language processing also to check the applicability of Swish for language models. So this is a machine translation task for translating English to German and they have conducted experiments across four different architectures and in all the cases, Swish actually performed better than all the other activation functions. This proved that Swish can be generalized to other domains also, it's not only for image domain. Now let's look at the Python implementation. It is quite simple, it is just x into sigmoid of x. We know that sigmoid is 1 by 1 plus e power minus x. I used numpy operation here for calculating the exponential and this is the implementation. Now let's verify this implementation in Colab and then plot the graph of switch activation. So I have initialized numpy for calculating the exponentials and matplotlib for plotting the graphs. Now I have taken the range of minus 4 to plus 4 and I am plotting the graph of input versus output for switch activation function. If you plot the graph it comes like this. It looks like switch function. So this is 0 and from 0 it is almost linear and before 0 the slope has decreased a bit and then it is increasing. That's all from this video. In the next video we will see other activation functions. If you like the content please hit the like button. I have shared the playlist of the course in the description. See you next time. Thank you.